Amen. That was good tonight. You liked that, didn't you? Sound good tonight? Well, aren't you glad that we're getting a recording studio here at First Baptist Church? We can get some of that good music in your homes, in your houses, in your cars, and uh, maybe for some of you, replace some of the other music you listen to. We should go there tonight, shouldn't we? Uh-oh, got a little quiet here all of a sudden there, Brother Treadway. All of a sudden, it got real quiet, didn't it? Woo, boy, open your Bibles if you would. Uh, anywhere is good, but tonight we're going to open back, if we could, and we get there right there to Matthew chapter 16. Now, if you need a handout for the service tonight, unfortunately, we do not have any extra. Because of the lack of Internet, we could not get those printed today. And so I apologize for that. So hopefully uh, you have one, you brought one, or you can just listen well. And so if you need one, you're, will, you're welcome to raise your hand, but it won't do any good. Uh, we don't have any to give to you. And so... Uh, but uh, Matthew chapter 16, as we continue and should finish tonight this particular booklet on what is church or what is the church. And I've been thankful for the time to be able to spend in that, and some folks have mentioned it's been a help to them as well. I appreciate that. Hopefully, as we go through this particular series, after we finish what is church, then we'll look at which church or basically why are we Baptist church, all right? Why aren't we Methodists? Why aren't we Catholics? All right, why are we a Baptist church? Why are we not just a community church? All right, why are we Baptist? And we'll look at that, and then we'll look at the last, seer, the last message in this series, or messages, I should say, is why church? What I'm trying to do is put the foundation in place. Church is not man's idea. Church was God's idea. If it was man's idea, then none of us ought to waste our time here on a Wednesday night or a Sunday. But it's not man's idea. It was God's idea, giving us some elements of a local church, build on that foundation to why we ought to go to a Baptist church, and then what, in that last session, last sessions, what we ought to do about it. All right, those are the ones for sure you don't want to miss. They're going to get pretty practical, and they may step on some toes in that last session, all right, just so you know that. That's where I'm going. So during those last ones, if, if I make you upset, I warned you. All right, it's like when someone says, now don't get offended, and then proceeds to be very offensive. All right, now I'm not telling you not to get offended. I'm just warning you. That's where I'm going with it. So you can get offended or not. We'll try to go from what the Bible says. That's what we try to do here at First Baptist Church, follow God's word, right? Aren't you glad we try to follow God's word? And though sometimes we may misstep, try to come back and say, here, where should we be? Well, I'm thankful for all that. Thank you for the, the tech team here who was able to help get everything rolling, those behind-the-scenes things. These services often take a lot of effort in the background, and we all reap the benefit of it. And I sure appreciate all, and all the, the people who sang and, and Beth and looking forward to getting that recording studio up and going for us, and uh, we're real close on that, so maybe a few weeks till it's done, but we can't get any music out within two weeks, all right? So give us a little, little bit of time, be a little patient on that, and Lord willing, we'll be able to, to uh, have some good things to, to help the body of Christ here and, and maybe around the country as well. Well, Matthew chapter 16 and then we have this place we looked at each week where, starting in verse number 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Merjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. In verse 18, our key verse, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail Against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Lord, I thank you for the time we have tonight. Lord, thank you for this church, First Baptist Church. Lord, for the wonderful people here, those who are here, join us online as well. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in this church. We see your gospel at work, alive and present, Lord, your spirit and your power. Lord, thank you that we get to be a part of a church that you're involved in and you're doing something. And Lord, I pray that tonight you'd work in the service. Lord, help me as I speak to speak clearly and, and just explain things clearly. But Lord, I pray that your spirit would touch us tonight. It would illuminate your word to our heart on a spiritual level and things that are spiritually discerned would be illuminated by your Holy Spirit. Lord, bless this time now. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Well, because you all have, if you have a fill-in-the-blank booklet from other weeks, you don't need me to fill in all the blanks, but I'll give you just a brief recap in case this is your first week here. We've been looking at uh, the elements of a local church. Churches are under attack from without and within. I, every week, I mentioned I try to follow some of the things that happens in churches around the country just for 
I don't know, information's sake, and just curious what is happening. And every week I am not, not ceased. I'm amazed at decisions that are made and things that people say and things that people do in regards to church. And sometimes what we would say even be good churches that, and, and we, we are, 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 are in the same place that if we're not careful, we could fall either direction, right? I don't stand here and say, boy, we've got it all figured out. We don't. None of us, not me, not you. We don't have it figured out. All right, but we're trying to follow Jesus Christ, and there are some things that I think ought to be pretty plain, but aren't pretty plain. And I mentioned some of those things that, that one person started a brand new thing that, that they're going to have these Bible studies on Sunday nights so that their church is not biblically illiterate. Wow, that's amazing. We do the same thing. It's called Sunday night church. Last time I checked, at least we've done it uh, for 45 and a half years, all right? At least Pastor Lett was 44 years, didn't I? I've not stopped Sunday night church, all right? We still have Sunday night church. Like, this is a brand new thing, though. A number of other people have stopped multiple services. Uh, places that would have, would have preached the gospel like we preached it and, and believed years back just like we would believe. But now, boy, it's uh, just Sunday morning, and it's two or three services Sunday morning, and the exact same service. One time my wife and I were visiting a church and went to a morning service. And uh, I went to the service and, and uh, the man preached and happened to, Dream happened to know this individual. So uh, that's great. We, he had to run out and go preach at another campus. So I'll let you know what kind of church it was, another campus, eight other campuses. And so we said, we'll go back at the evening service. Went back to the evening service to catch this, this guy. And lo and behold, it was the exact same service as the morning service. Same music, same message. Same slides. You know it's harder to pay attention when they preach the same thing twice in the same day? <laughs> and I realized, we realized very quickly, then we didn't leave, we realized very quickly that uh, they were just making multiple services so that people could come to what fit, to, fit their schedule. I tell you what, you, you, you ought to come to church, but each service at First Baptist Church is a little bit different, is it not? Churches are under attack from without and within. And so we've been looking through that and looking through some things that uh, make up the, a local church, the elements of a local church. Preaching and teaching is the first thing on your, on your sheet. And every church ought to consist of the foundations of preaching and teaching. If a church you're going to doesn't have preaching and teaching, then you maybe ought to find a different church. If all they're doing is just uh, having a little play up on stage, and there's times for that. We do that at Christmas time, some special occasions. But if every week is a neat little drama presentation, then maybe you ought to find a different church. An element of a local church is preaching and teaching. I think we find that in God's Word. We talked about prayer, an element of a local church. We talked about giving last week. Giving is an element of the local church. And then last week we ended on fellowship. Fellowship is a part of the local church, but fellowship is not the most important part of a local church. If you come to me and say, well, I don't have any friends, I truly feel so sorry for you. I would love to introduce people to you. I would remind you that a man ha who hath friends must show himself friendly. But at the end of the day, we do not go to church just to find friends. It is not the most important element of a local church, but it is a key element of the local church, fellowship. And remember the phrase we use, fellowship is not to take, but to give. Boy, if we could figure that out about church in general, church is not to take, church is to give. Not just financially, but give of, of myself and my time. Give of my uh, talents that God has given to me. I'm not here just to take. We live in a, consu a consumer-driven uh, time period. A fast food time period. We want it right now, just like we want it. And if it doesn't come fast enough, or just like we ordered it, we send it back. And have a few choice words along the way. You been to McDonald's before? McDonald's, anybody? Come on, you ever been to McDonald's? Raise your hand. How many have ordered fries before? How many like the fries at McDonald's? Anybody got a bad fry from McDonald's before? Were you happy or sad? Sad. I'm not going to ask you how many complained. 
Maybe not to the, to, to the person who could help you, but inside or to other people. Can you believe they can't even get my, they can't even get my fries right at McDonald's? Of all the things at McDonald's, they got to get the French fries right. What is wrong with these people? I like steak. I've been to a restaurant with my wife before where they have messed up both of our orders. At that time, you do not have a happy feeling inside of your heart. Right? Now, we don't normally send things back, and usually they come by. Oh, how is everything? We don't lie either. How is everything? It's fine. Oh, is it not good? <laughs> it's not what I ordered. <laughs> it was an interesting take on steak. And, <laughs> you know, interesting. And, uh, but we live in this society, and we bring it into church. If church doesn't happen just like I want it, just what I need, just what I ordered, I'm out of here. And I'll let you know if I don't like it, Pastor. Now, if you have a problem, you are welcome. Please, come and talk to me. In fact, I'd rather you talk to me than to everybody else. Yeah. All right? You can call the office, stop me in the hallway. Only thing I ask, I have one tiny, tiny request, all right? One request. If you could just not stop me before a service. It's the only thing I ask. Um, and, and, it's, you know, and if you do, I won't fuss at you too much. But uh, I normally before service, now with choir, I'm coming here. I'm, I'm in a mindset trying to pray and get ready to preach. I'm a little excited. I'm thinking through my sermon. And at times you stop and like, hey, you know, there's a problem with this. There's a toilet leaking. Now I want to get that toilet fixed. All right? But now I'm getting ready to preach. The song service is going on. Guess what I'm thinking about? Leaking toilet. You know that a leaking toilet will cost you thousands of dollars. True story. Terrible. All right, years back, I realized at the First Baptist Church, at that time, I elevated a leaking toilet to the top of the problems at First Baptist Church. Everyone ignores a leaking toilet until the water bill comes. And you're like, oh my goodness. If you could just maybe halfway through the sermon, tell me, that's fine. All right, just stand up, leaking toilet. All right, fair enough, got it. I can work through that. But uh, the only thing, and if you forget, I'm not fussing at you. You'll be, you're great. But, and, you, and I'm not saying that because someone has done that. I just, um, but, but fellowship is not to take, or, but to give. Let's continue on, though, as we look tonight at our sheet, some other elements of a local church. The next word there we have in our sheet is ordinances. Ordinances. There are two ordinances that are given to us as a church and the first one is the Lord's Supper, communion. First Corinthians 11, 23-26, the Bible says this, For I have received of the Lord that which, I, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. A couple things to notice about this particular ordinance. One, there is no set time for having to observe this ordinance. Right? For a lot of years, we did it on the first Sunday of each month at First Baptist Church. I bounced off that a little bit when I took over to take some time and prepare, preach the message. You remember the first time we had communion as a church, it was a special time for us. COVID hit, all right, and I've been waiting. We will have communion again, the Lord's Supper again. I don't want, I didn't want the Lord's Supper during that pandemic time to be wrapped around COVID-19. Because the purpose of the Lord's Supper is to focus on the Lord's death, the passion of Christ. I didn't want a lot of side bars in this thought process. Paul in Corinthians tells us that the Lord's Supper is a really big deal. In fact, he says that because some church, some, some Christians, did not observe it with the proper perspective that some, he says, sleep or they're dead. That's what Paul says. I don't know what causes the Lord to say, boy, you've missed the mark, and now you're coming home to glory in that regard. I just know that Paul said some have missed the mark in this regard, talking to the Corinthian church, and that some have passed away because of this. That leads me to believe that the Lord's Supper, the observance of the Lord's Supper, is a very, very serious ordinance, serious obligation no time frame for when we have to observe it. It doesn't say every month, every two months, every six months, every once a year. 
All right, and they were doing some things there that were that were demeaning this this the special uh, qualities of this particular ordinance. But it's given to the church to observe. That's why at First Baptist Church we ask that those who are members partake of the Lord's Supper with us. All right, it's, that's how we believe that to be accurate and right here, at First Baptist Church. But a very, very sacred, in my opinion, and what I believe the Scripture teaches, a very sacred, very wonderful ordinance that we get to observe the Lord's Supper. It ought not to be taken lightly. It ought not to be, oh, we're having Lord's Supper. Oh, this is good. Now, I remember as a young person, this is a little tougher, is it not? When I was young, I loved grape juice night. Not, uh, no fault to my parents or the church I was in and their lack of teaching, but a little kid, they're like, yes, I always wanted to taste the, the little cracker. And then I got one. I, wanted, I got the grape juice. You know what I wanted? More. You know, Pastor, I, I'm going to bring a big gulp. But a very serious, very serious ordinance given to the local church. We'll look, when we go into which church, why we observe it the way that we do and what the Bible teaches on the Lord's Supper and what it represents and what it exactly means. Difference between a Baptist church and, and, and a Catholic, or a Catholic church. We're different on that. They call it the sacraments. We're not the same. We're not the same. Now, we don't use wine. We don't use wine in our observance of the Lord's Supper. I already went through these series on alcohol and wine, what the Scripture means when it says wine. And so if you have a question about that, go back and listen to that, why we don't do that. Um, but uh, I have seen this. I've been to uh, some Catholic services for a funeral for some people, and I've observed them do Mass, all right? And they, they take the cup, and they, and they bless it and wipe it off and, and do this over and over again. They all share the same thing. We observe it a certain way on purpose. But a very serious thing, but a part of the local church. The second ordinance, second blank there, is baptism. Baptism. To be observed by a local church. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 28 to 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We, from Scripture, believe that baptism is a sign of public identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We find that in Romans, all right, in Romans chapter number 6, verses 3 and 4. It's not on your sheet, but you can write that, that, that uh, verse down for later on, where that says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The way we do our baptism is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. In fact, if you were to watch me baptize somebody, I'll say, buried likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection to walk in newness of life. Right there from Romans chapter 6. A public identification. You're saying when you get baptized, I am a Christian, and I'm saying it publicly. You get saved on the inside, you get baptized on the outside. It says here, and that's why we do it connected to a church service. This is for the church, a public identification. So everyone else knows that person is following Jesus Christ and representing his death, burial and resurrection now let me just plug in there why we why we have someone go under the water by immersion the word is some places sprinkle the word baptism was not found in the English language the word baptism comes from the Greek language the word there in Greek is baptizo they didn't have a word for it so they took that ad the ism and made baptism the actual word baptizo in Greek, it was used in secular writings. Not Christians, not pastors, they used this word. And my favorite example of this was when they used this in the Greek language, in Greek secular writings, other people, and they were used it in a recipe. And the recipe involved pickles. And you would take the cucumbers in this ancient recipe from this time period and you would baptizo the cucumbers 
in the vinegar solution. Now, how many have had a pickle before? You don't make a pickle. Right? Baptizo. To dunk. To dip. To immerse. Like this. Coupled with the fact, when Jesus got baptized, he went down into the river and then came up out of the river. Well, why did he go down to the river? To get baptized. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kim. He went down to get baptized. If he had just gotten sprinkled, would he have had to gone down into the river? Here, come really close, Jesus. Okay, right there. Now we're going to baptize you. Okay, good. Now go back up. No, it doesn't make any sense. Not with what we know about the word baptizo, not with what we see in Scripture. All right, not only with the example, but with it, what it represents. Lastly, third reason why we immerse, looking at Romans chapter 6, that it's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and throughout Scripture. Jesus' death, he's in the earth for three days. Remember, in fact, compares it to Jonah in the belly of the whale. Even so, the Son of Man must be in the earth. So the picture of his death is going down, all right? So how does this illustrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? All right, I, I think it's pretty clear this represents that, does it not? That is why we baptize by immersion. It's different. All right, and uh, we believe that it is a public identification. We do not baptize babies. It comes, baptism comes after the point of salvation. Or not before salvation. It's a choice that someone makes. I was thrilled that Miss Jackie and Mr. Jeff Wood got baptized Sunday. Thrilled my heart. Thrilled for a couple of reasons. I, I'm going to talk about you just a second, Woods, all right? Not very much, just a little bit. Thrilled because they're not 25 any longer. I know, I know, I know. Shock faces. They're not 12. They're not 12. They're, they've, lived, they've lived a little bit of life. I'm not saying they're old. They're, no, 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 no. They're not even senior saints, right? You have to identify senior saints by yourself. But for them to follow the Lord in baptism, that was a commitment, identification. And they want to be part of this church as well. They knew that to be part of this church, you need to get baptized. In fact, Brother Jeff told me, I'm going to tell him that the one thing I want to say is this. He sat there and said, we're so glad we found this church, and we want to die at this church. It's good. Now, what I didn't tell you that day, Brother Jeff, when you said that, I thought, well, just don't do it during church. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good moment. I didn't want to ruin the mood. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but, boy, but, but you folks getting baptized encouraged my heart. A few weeks back, we had, we had a, uh, maybe a couple, couple months back now, I able to baptize somebody a little bit older and then a, a young person as well. I thought, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for people being obedient and what God has commanded, identifying with Jesus Christ. And parents, those of you who have young, young children, the children are out tonight in SOS, who are struggling with baptism, they're young, maybe five or six or four, five or six, um, I would encourage you, all right, to talk about it, but don't push them to this. Let them, with Jesus Christ, with God in their life, come to the point of baptism. All right, if they are truly saved, God will work, the Spirit of God will work in their heart, and bring them to the point of obedience. I did not want to push my kids and then to get baptized for, for dad. They don't need to identify with dad. They're identifying with Jesus Christ. Danielle, my youngest, she got baptized a couple years ago now. She came to us, oh, uh, maybe a year after she uh, professed to trust Jesus Christ and said, Dad, I want to get baptized. Or maybe she said, Mom, first, and she said, well, you got to talk to Dad. I said, Danielle, are you going to get baptized? And I think it was her that first said, well, she wanted to eat the, eat, eat the, eat the juice and the crackers. And... Um, <laughs> Okay, well, so, well, honey, okay, well, that's, that's not why we get baptized. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, did, Pastor, did you feel a little bit as a hypocrite a child yourself? Well, maybe, but it's all right. No. And I said, no, honey, that's not why. And so we get a talk, and it was probably, probably six months or so, somewhere in there, I don't remember the exact time frame, when she'd come, and I didn't bring it up again. I was praying for and, and one or two, but I wanted her to make that decision because of God working in her life. I don't want her, when she's older, to say, you know, Dad, you talked me into this thing. I didn't. In fact, a couple times I told her, no, you're not ready yet. You don't understand it yet. One time she said, well, does it make you get saved and go to heaven? No, no, that's not why. 
About six months after that, she put these things together, asked some questions, and she came and said, I want to get baptized because I want to be obedient to Jesus Christ. Well, that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> it's a pretty good reason. Baptism, element of the local church, and I'm thankful that at First Baptist Church we have water in our baptistry. A lot of churches don't have water because they don't need it. They don't need it. They can use it for other space. I pray that we never need that space for anything else. All right? I, I, I remember the time I went to a church and I saw with my own eyes Christmas decorations in the baptistry. Now we have water, sometimes warm, sometimes cold, <laughs> but always wet, <laughs> always wet. Has there ever not been water in there? Yes, there was one time we came out and there was a leak in the tank. And the water was actually on the stage. And uh, harder to get baptized when it's all over the front of the stage. But uh, we got a new tank in there a few years back. Baptism. Let's move on, though. I could stay there for a while. We'll come back in a few weeks, most likely. Another part of local church is singing. You know, the singing is a part of the local church. The Bible tells us that. Let's look at that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves. Also, uh, could be explained, speaking among yourselves, referring to a gathering of individuals. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Written to a church. Talking to the church, listen, your church, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. He wasn't just saying, well, make sure you talk the songs. That's not his point. The point is there's some singing going on. And uh, just to explain a little bit again, psalms could either be from the book of Psalms, also could imply instruments and music. We use instruments and other uh, uh, things and music to help with the songs that we sing. Some churches do not believe in any instrumentation. Now, I won't fight them on that. They would not use a piano. All right, it's just the voice. That's fine. I believe that the Bible teaches you can use instruments. Read through the book of Psalms and you'll see a whole uh, a bountiful list of instruments that are used, including the trombone. Now, it won't, it's not called the trombone in your King James Bible. It's called the sackbutt. All right, but a precursor to the trombone. The trombone's in the Bible. Amen? Amen. That's what I've read. Psalms and then hymns, extemporaneous expressions of praise. Hymns are, are where we just start to praise God for what he's doing. You know, it's okay. It's okay to praise the Lord. Right? It's okay during a song to praise the Lord. I'm thankful that, that we're a church where we can say amen during a song. I told you, you're welcome to lift an, lifting of holy hands. All right? It's okay to lift an arm or both of them. Really, I'm okay with that. Um, I find it in Scripture. I like Acts 16, uh, 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Boy, they sang out of their heart. I can't wait to find out what they sang. You ever wondered that? What do you sing when you're in jail? <laughs> uh, I'll sing whatever opens the door now that I know that's a possibility. You know, <laughs> you know, Christ is solid rock, I, victory in Jesus, whatever it takes. Listen, but they're singing. They sang out of their heart. They sang out of their heart. They sang out of their need. They sang out of their distress. But they weren't distressed. They were physically distressed, but spiritually not distressed. When you come to church, you can sing, and you know what? It doesn't really matter what's going on outside. It matters what's going on inside. And the world can be a messed up place, and we can come and still sing praises to God Almighty and be a little soulless here at First Baptist Church. They sang, and they sang spiritual songs. Now, I one time heard an interpretation of this verse that as I studied, I disagreed with. They, they interpreted the Psalms as only from the book of Psalms. Hymns, they interpreted as, as hymns like, How Great Thou Art. 
and spiritual songs, they said, well, those, are, those, are, those other songs like Victory and Jesus. Now, it was a kind of a nice theory. I don't find this passage supports that. I find that psalms uh, can refer to psalms or instruments, that hymns are just expressions of praise in spiritual songs. Don't mean songs like Victory and Jesus. They could, but here's spiritual songs. As opposed, a spiritual song is a song that is spiritual as opposed to that which is carnal. A spiritual song. One that worships the Lord and is, I think, has three elements. Has devotion. Devotion to Him. I like the song that Mrs. Green sang. It's through the blood. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus. There's devotion right there. Devotion to Him. How great thou art. Who's he talking about? God. Like a river glorious. Thy perfect peace. Devotion. Distinction. Spiritual song is distinct. We ought not sound just like the world. Distinction. Now, that is a tougher category to navigate through. Because you know that pianos are used in church and outside of church. People use their voices in a Disney movie and at church. But most of us know, if we're honest, if we're genuine, if we're authentic, music that's distinctly Christian. I told you the story, but a few years back I was lifting weights with the then um, uh, football coach of a local high school. He said, come on over and lift over here in, in our gym. And so I went over to, down there, uh, down just a little ways to their gym, the local high school. We started lifting weights there. Not a Christian. I witnessed to him and uh, was, wit and was you know, witnessing to him and trying to disciple him and trying to bring him to the point of salvation. When I got there that day, got to this gym, this high school gym, uh, local gym, he said, uh, he said, well, he said, J.D., what do you want to listen to? I said, so-and-so. I said, um, I said you're, you're not going to like the music that I like to listen to. I said, I brought my headphones. My headphones. I said, I will put them in, and then you listen to what you want to listen to, and I'll have my own music play. No, 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 no. I got Pandora right here on my phone. You tell me what, what you want to listen to. I said, no, no. I tried again. No, no, no. I said, I have my own. No, no. He said, J.D., you tell me. I'll put this in. So I said, okay. And I, I told him something I listened to. And he pulled it in, and boom, and for the next two, two and a half hours, long workout session that day, <laughs> piping through a local weight room was Christian gospel music. I thought, he's never going to last. <laughs> we start to lift, he's like, wow, this is old school. <laughs> now, isn't this interesting that he knew it was different? Isn't that interesting? He knew it was different. Well, we're lifting weights, we're benching, and then we're doing some dips and deadlifts in there. And all of a sudden, his football team comes in about halfway through. They come in to this weight room at a local high school gym and cranking through Christian music. And they come in, they're like, Coach, what are you listening to? They knew it was different. He said, oh, this is my friend, Pastor Howell. He's from First Baptist, I think I'm Pastor J.D., from First Baptist Church. Oh, hi, Pastor. That's great. And for the next hour, we lifted with them, and the same music played through there. The gospel's playing through there, singing, and it's tremendous. It's different. So why is it that Christians are the only ones who can't figure that out? I could stop there for a while, but I'd be preaching, not teaching any longer. <laughs> Devotion, distinction, and then direction. Direction from the Holy Spirit. In our music, the Holy Spirit, I believe, has a strong part. Has a strong, strong part. The direction is to the Lord. That's your blank. To the Lord. The Holy Spirit guides us in music. You know, there's sometimes, I'll, sometime I'll be listening to, to something, it'll start to play, and I'm like, I don't like that right here. Now, the, the, the truth is, probably because of my musical background and training, I could probably explain maybe a little clearer than some what bothers me about this music, some of the tempo, some of the stylistic features, some of the chord structure, some of the instrumentation, and some of the emphasis in different areas that they're doing. But at the end of the day, 
Why I'm not comfortable is because of right here in my heart, in my spirit. And I want the Holy Spirit to bear witness in my spirit that the music that I listen to and that we have here at church and that I sing pleases the Lord. There's a direction. It's, there's devotion, distinction, and direction. Our corporate music influences others, but is always to be directed toward God, toward the Lord. Make sure that when you sing, you sing up there. It right? doesn't matter who's around. You sit in the back of the... As you sit under the balcony, it kind of blocks everyone else's voices, so you kind of feel like you sing a solo. I've sat back there, and I've been told that as well. You shouldn't worry about those around you. What if they hear me? Well, if they hear you, go back to Ephesians 5, verse 19. Speaking to yourselves. That doesn't mean mumbling to yourself. It means yourselves. Here. You ought to be hurt. Well, sometimes I sing off tune. You're right. You, you do. You do. Where's Brother Mitchell? But I'd rather have an off tune Christian who's praising God right here, who's singing and making melody in his heart to the Lord, and someone who's always on pitch and too consumed with self to worship God. It's a problem right there. It's a problem. Now, you get to sing solos if you're off tune. Well, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> David says, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee in my soul, which thou hast redeemed. Make a joyful noise in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. You know, singing brings us into the presence of God Almighty. Basis of our songs, the word of Christ. We're to teach and admonish, caution through music. We sing with grace in our hearts. We sing to the Lord. Our music should flow from a knowledge of Christ, a sense of gratitude, and influence everyone around us. You ought to have a song in your heart. You're at work, you can be singing. Pastor Ryan likes to sing around the office, doesn't he, Brother Scott? Yeah, I wouldn't amen too loudly, Pastor Ryan. But I like the fact he's got a song, and normally it's a, it's a good Christian song. Normally, sometimes if I say, Pastor Ryan, <laughs> can't sing. No, 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 no that, that is not true. I'm just teasing him. But he's always singing something. I like that. How about you at work? Do you sing at work? I catch myself singing down the hallways here. It's got a good echo down the hallways. You know, you sound better in those places, right? <laughs> I know. Singing in the shower, out of the shower, in the car, out of the car. He's singing songs to him. We'll direct others' attention to Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you for all you've done. And Lord, that we get to come to church and worship you. Lord, may we, in each part, an element, Lord, may we have our attention focused directed on you. Lord, I pray again for singing here that our hearts would always be turned towards you. Lord, we sure love you. In Jesus' name, amen.